So in light of the pandemic, COVID-19 going on uh, in our society today, I've, I've decided to pause my sermon series and do a one-of sermon today. Is that all right? Yeah. We're going to do a one-of sermon today. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become a one-hit wonder, and it's called Sanitized. Yeah. Sanitized, all right? So everybody got their Purell with them today? Everybody got their hand sanitizer with them? No, I'm serious. Drop it in the offering bucket because we need some. We're running short. Uh, give us your hand sanitizer. Now, those watching online, you got your hand sanitizer. You've been sanitizing. All right. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not trying to poke fun, but that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, all right? Uh, I didn't know my need for hand sanitizer until this week, okay? Um, I was, I've never really been a Purell kind of person, a hand sanitizer kind of person. Uh, I know that I've, I've gone to touch babies before and brand new moms have been like, you know, put all over my hands. But really, like, I've done my normal due diligence in life. I've washed my hands before I eat. I've washed my hands after going potty. I've washed my hands before going to bed. If you don't do that, you're nasty. You're going to touch your face while you sleep. I, I'm just saying, like, I've always done those things, but this week, I have a new profound knowledge of my need for hand, sanitize, hand sanitizer. The amount of social media posts about hand sanitizer just has opened my awareness. Uh, commercials and news reports and the lack of trying to find any of it in the store has shown me my need for hand sanitizer. Watch, I'm just, I'm going somewhere with this, all right? I'm not making fun, I'm serious. Until there was attention brought to it, I didn't really know my need. Huh? This is kind of how it is with Christianity, right? Until we bring about the knowledge of a need for a savior, people really don't know that they need a savior. Huh? Hello, somebody. Okay. Today, we're going to read a bunch of verses. We're going to look at some stuff today. And I have to tell you that um, I've been sanitized my whole life. I've been sanitized my whole life. I'm going to show you how. We're going to get into this today. But let's look at Romans. Romans 10, 17 real quick. One of the most popular verses in this church, uh, it's a verse that I have studied thoroughly from Bible school. It's a verse that I've been raised on my whole life. My dad has taught me the scripture, and it says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, do we got that? So let's just keep it up on the screen. Let's look at this. It says, so then faith comes. It comes. It's available. It happens. So maybe you don't have faith today, but faith will come. Faith can come. It's something that arrives to us. Faith comes, how? By hearing. hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And if you didn't get it the first time, he says, and by hearing, right? Faith comes by hearing, and by hearing, and really what we could say is this. Faith doesn't just come by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, and the second one should be an understanding. Faith comes by hearing and understanding, ready? The word of God. Faith does not come by hearing bad news. Maybe faith in the bad thing may come. But godly faith only comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is one of the main reasons why it is a personal conviction of mine that I could not close down church today. I could not close down church today. I could... I, when we have a very large online following, I could have just did a live online, online broadcast. I, I could have. I totally could have. But in my spirit, in who I am as a human being, 
I could not forego live interaction of hearing the word of God. In my spirit, where do the people who want to go to a live service go if there is no church available? Where, where would we go, okay? And so inside of who I am, I had to have this church open today. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then how does fear come? Fear comes by hearing and hearing by bad news. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by bad news. And the more bad news you hear, fear comes. Fear comes. You had no fear last week, but fear came this week. Because fear comes by hearing and hearing by bad news. All right? Faith will never come by simply filling up on bad news. So just throwing this out, just throwing this out there today. If you spent five hours each day listening to bad news and no time reading the Bible, you could not quite, you could not possibly have been full of faith. If you consumed more bad news than you did good news, Faith couldn't come. Throw this out there, right? Just giving you a straight teaching. This is just, it's just logic, okay? We don't even have to be super spiritual to understand the logic. If I eat more bad food than good food, I'm going to have a reaction to the bad food and not the good food. Get, get what I'm saying here? Okay. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay. Today I'm going to endeavor to not bash anybody or anything. I believe that we're so split as a country on every topic anyway uh, that I'm not standing up on the stage today saying that I'm right or that I'm wrong. I could quite possibly be wrong for having church today. Okay, I'm just being honest with you. Um, I just want to tell you my story. I want to tell you where I'm coming from and, and my response to what's happening in the world today because this isn't going to be the last time that this happens. Okay? This isn't going to be the last time this happens. When I was a child, my dad founded Christian Faith Fellowship Family Church when I was three years old. I've been in church my whole life. This is what the McKelveys have always done. And as a child, I was in Sunday school. Some of my Sunday school teachers are still in the church today. And I was taught the whole Bible. I was taught all the stories. And as a kid, I can remember reading the book of Revelation and being scared out of my mind. Can we be for real? And there's these verses in Revelation that says, in the last days. And I'm like, oh my God. I hope I'm not here for that. Right? Ready? It says stuff like this. There will be pestilence and earthquakes and wars, and rumors of wars. And I read these stories and, and saw the response of the men of God to different tragedies throughout time and, 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 and watching Moses' response to pestilence and, and plagues and things that happened. And I'm sitting back, and I gotta be honest with you, from three months ago to today, nothing's changed for me. Nothing's changed. I've been training for this my whole life. All right. And I, I know that I'm going to sound totally crazy. I get that. I get that. I'm going to sound totally insane. But firefighters don't want someone's house to burn. But they train to put out fire. And when they get the call that a fire happened and that bell goes off, they're kind of a little bit like, yo, I finally get to use everything that I've been training to use all these years. It's a shame that somebody's house is burning, but I was made for this. I was made for this. I was created for this. And I know, I, I know how I sound, but I'm just saying, since three years old, I was made for this. I've been created for this. 
I've been taught my whole life that those who believe in my name shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I can't lay hands on the sick with social distance. I can send the word and the word will heal because the word will never return void. And I get all that. We can pray right now, and, and the word of God can transcend across the airwaves and across the Wi-Fi and the internet. Absolutely. And, and people can connect in faith where they are right now, in their hospital beds, in their bedrooms, in their living rooms, wherever they're watching this right now. Absolutely. But there's something very real and tangible when we work the word of God in faith and lay hands on the sick and they recover. It does something for the person who gets healed as much as it does something to the person who laid their hands and saw the person get healed. Amen? Amen. I knew what I was signing up for when I said, yeah, I'll be a pastor one day because I read the back of the book. I knew that one day something like this would happen. And for me in my life, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. All right? I was sanitized as a child, and I'm sanitized today. I was sanitized when I was a kid, and I've been living a sanitized life. Now listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to justify that statement. Wait, you, you've lived a sanitized life your whole life? We know stories about you. My behavior doesn't determine my sanitized state. There's a word in the Bible called sanctified. Sanctified. We're going to talk about that for the next few minutes. First we're talking about how faith comes. Now we're going to talk about sanctification. Sanctified. The word sanctification. Ha who has heard that word before in here? Sanctification, okay? Who has not heard that word before? Okay, I'll tell you why. It's Christianese, all right? You don't go to work and say, oh, I'm going to sit over here because I'm sanctified. All right, nobody uses that word in normal English conversation. But really, if we boil it down, the root of the word sanctified, sanctification, means holiness. It means holy. And now, when I say a word like that, holiness and holy, you're like, but Pastor Mike, how can you say you've lived a holy life and we know that you've done bad things? Okay, so we still don't understand what holiness is. Okay, so the word holiness, if we break it down even further, simply means set apart. Set apart. Set apart. Now let's take a look at this for a second. This set apart. I'm going to tell you this today. The set apart or the holiness of sanctification has nothing to do with your doing. Okay? Your part to play in sanctification, in holiness, is faith in Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Your part to play in sanctification is faith in Jesus. And I hope that no matter what's happened in society in the last two weeks, your faith in Jesus hasn't changed. Okay. That should not have changed. So let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And it says this. Now many... Now, I'm sorry. Now may the God of, say that with me, peace. peace. Oh, let's just say that again. Yeah. May the God of peace. peace. If you're watching online, say that over your household right now. May the God of peace. peace. I speak peace over your family and your household, over your job, over your mind. May the God of peace himself sanctify you. Who did the sanctifying? God himself. God himself. What did you have to do? Nada so far. Nada so far. Ready? May the God of peace himself sanctify you how much? Partially? Completely. completely. Like you need to wash your hands. Right? Wash your hands completely. Do the alphabet twice while you're washing your hands. Okay, just help somebody out. Watch. And may your whole spirit, 
your whole soul, your whole body, be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, well, Pastor Mike, look, right there, see? We have to be kept blameless. So who's responsible to keep you blameless? Well, isn't it us? Where am I in this topic at all? Okay, now watch. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you and keep you body, soul, and spirit blameless to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his job to maintain your sanitizing. It's his job to maintain your sanitizing. It's his job. He sanctified you. He maintains your sanctification. <laughs> I can't maintain something that was never mine. All right, I'm going to boil this down a little bit more, okay? Actually, I'm going to say it like this. To be preserved blameless is not your maintaining but God's. He called you blameless. You don't get to define your blamelessness. And I think that's part of the problem is that we look at things that we do and we label them something other than what God said. We label ourselves shameful, blameful, whatever. And God says, but wait a second. Aren't I the one who wrote the definitions here? And this is what happened with Jesus. Jesus comes to the earth and there's a bunch of people trying to tell him what the Bible says. He says, yo, I am. What? He says, I am the Bible. I am the word made flesh. You don't get to define it. You don't get to define what blameless means. He does because he called you blameless. If you are a believer today, you have been sanitized. All right? But just like today's sanitizing, the church world too has become addicted to spiritual sanitizing. We become addicted to looking at our dirtiness instead of our righteousness. We get addicted to looking at our filthiness and being concerned about our filthiness instead of concerned about our sanctification. We're more concerned with messing it up than we are fulfilling it. We're more concerned about getting dirty again than we are doing something great in the kingdom with the found freedom that we have to serve Jesus Christ. All right, all right. I'm getting myself amped up. I'm sorry if you're watching online, but I'm getting amped up here today, all right? Sanctification, are you ready? Simply means this, that you were taken from Team Satan to Team Jesus. You were set apart from Team Satan, and you were put on Team Jesus. That's simply what it means, that you were set apart unto God for his good work and his good pleasure. That you were taken out of the kingdom of darkness and sanctified, sanitized by the blood of Jesus Christ and put on the team of the kingdom of God. None of that has to do with your good behavior. But we're still busy. We're so busy, so busy, oh my God. I thought a bad thing today. Oh. Spiritual sanitizing. Instead of saying, wait, wait, I'm on the team of the King of Kings, what part do I need to play today? Am I gonna, I'm gonna score a goal today. I'm gonna get a touchdown today. I'm an overcomer. I'm a more than conqueror through Jesus Christ. Woo. You've been set apart unto God. Now on his team, you are a son of the most high God. Listen to this. You have the power and authority to use all things that belong to your daddy. You have all rights and all authority to use everything that belongs to your daddy. I remember getting a revelation of this when I got my license. When I got my license, I found out that I was automatically covered on my dad's insurance. <laughs> know what that meant? 
I could drive his car. I didn't have to be stuck just driving my car, but I could drive his car because I was automatically covered. I was automatically covered under the insurance umbrella of everybody who lived in daddy's household. Come on, somebody. You're covered. You're covered. Everything that's your daddy's is yours, and it is at your disposal. All right? Today we're going to do something different. We're going to read some prophetic words by David, by King David. Back hundreds of years ago, he prophetically spoke about the year 2020 when COVID-19 would hit the United States. Not really, but it sounds good. <laughs> Psalm 91. And I want, you to, I want you to read Psalm 91 out loud with me. It'll be up on the screen. Ready? It says this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowl and the pestilence pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and serpent you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for showing us your salvation. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing and your deliverance. We thank you, Lord. Woo! Woo! If you're worried about social distancing today, remember that the angel's wings are encamped around you, keeping you in all your ways. Come on, somebody. On Team Jesus, all of this is provided. It's provided not based upon your ability to self-sanitize, but all of this is based upon the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work at the cross of Jesus. Amen? You have been sanitized. And the sanitizing that we're talking about today doesn't look like a squirt of Purell on your hand. It's more like the zombie apocalypse movies where you walk into the decontaminant chamber and all of a sudden there's this thing that overtakes you, just sprays all over you. 
it wipes out any trace of sickness or disease or calamity or plague. And then the little laser scans you up and down and you gotta turn around and it scans you front and back. It says, eh, clean, clean, been cleaned. We've been washed by the finished work of Jesus Christ. When you are sanitized, no evil can befall you. No plague or virus can come near you. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I could be a foolish 25-year-old man up here today. I'm not. I could be. I could be a foolish young man today. I'm reminded of a story, three Hebrew boys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were about to be publicly persecuted for standing up when everyone else was bowing down. They were giving into social pressure to worship another God other than their God, Jehovah. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you today. I struggled very hard in my spirit what I was doing this weekend. Very, very hard. Very hard. Because I believed that I was setting a precedent for what would come. How could I close today but then want to be open for Easter when nothing's changed? I set a precedent for the next time a calamity happens or something major happens in society. What was the church's response to that? What were we going to do? Okay? so. Again, no shame in anybody being safe and being protected. I, there, no, no, no condemnation to anybody, to any church, nothing. I'm saying for me, what was I going to do? And I thought about these three boys. Because here's the bigger question. Pastor Mike, I wonder if you have church and then someone ends up getting sick. And these three boys stood before the king. They said, king, we can't bow down. Our own personal conviction in who our God is won't let us bow down. And then they made this statement, he will deliver us. Watch. And they said, but even if, even if, I'm just going to tell you this today. Can I throw this out there today? Because, because we got to be real. Even if you were to get sick, even if you were to get a cough and the sneezes and all these things, even if, he will heal you. He will heal you. He will heal you. They said, even if we die, know this, we didn't bow down. We didn't bow down. King Nebuchadnezzar goes into a rage because he couldn't control these people. Heats the oven seven times hot or throws them in. So hot that when the guards open the doors and throw them in, they die because of the heat. Throws these three boys in and not only do they not burn, but they start dancing. They start tick-tocking in the fire. They're tick-tocking in the fire. And all of a sudden, a fourth person shows up in the fire, tick-tocking too. Dancing around like they got no mind in the middle of the fire. And, and King Nebuchadnezzar looks in, he says, wait. Didn't we not throw three boys in the fire? And they said, yeah. He said, but there's a fourth one in the fire. And this one looks like the Son of God. Here's the best part. Jesus hadn't even been born yet. He hadn't come to the earth yet. So one, how did no faith recognize Jesus? <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you, because I'm going to tell you the way you live your life, people will recognize Jesus on you. People, people will recognize the work of Christ on you. He hadn't been released to earth yet, but those three boys needed him. And when they needed him, he would come before his time. He would come before his time for a people that would need him. I love the part of the story. It says that they were taken out of fire and and they weren't even harmed. They didn't even smell like smoke. But the thing that, 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 that amazes me the most is that there is one thing that did burn in the fire. The ropes that bound them. 
the chains that bound him, the fear that bound him, the thing that's binding people up, that's the thing that was burned in the fire. The thing that was meant for their destruction was the thing that actually set them free. It set them free. I was just thinking about these, these boys today and in my life, I said, even if, even if I'm wrong, even if I foolishly did some things trying to do what God's called me to do, I believe that his grace and his mercy endures forever. His grace and his mercy endures forever. As a church, we're gonna close today in two ways. First, we're gonna partake of communion together corporately as a body. Secondly, our president has declared today, March 15th, 2020, a national day of prayer. So we're gonna take some time to pray. And during that time of prayer, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna ask that if there's something going on with you, if there's something going on in your life that you need prayer for, right where you are, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. I'm gonna have you, have you identify as someone who needs prayer. And if you feel comfortable with that, people who are in a row with you, come touch you on your shoulder, on your back, all right? Lay hands on you, and we're gonna pray corporately for whatever's going on in your life and your body. If you're watching live online, or you're watching this later, recorded, come on somebody. This prayer don't die because it's pre-recorded, right? I believe that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is available to touch your body today. So before we take communion, there's a few things that I wanna just reiterate that we learned today. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Fear comes by hearing bad news. Consume more faith than fear. Consume more word than news, okay? God has sanctified you. He has transferred you from team Satan to team Jesus. You are to dwell in the house of the Lord. They that dwell in the house of the Lord, right? That doesn't mean that you're supposed to move in and live here at the church. You're the house of the Lord. You are the church. He's saying, go be the church. Go be the church. Go be the messengers. I want to tell you today this. And hear me. This is what the Lord gave me to say to you today. You are the sanitized hands of God. You didn't get that. You are the sanitized hands of God in this generation to touch a hurting, dirty world. He sanitized you so he could use you to touch an infected, dirty, hurting world world. <laughs> he didn't choose you because you were perfect. He chose you because you were available. He sanitized you. He cleansed you. He called you. He put you in this generation, alive in this very hour, in this very day, to go through something like this. Notice the three boys, they went through the fire. He didn't come in and take them out but he brought them through it. God can bring us through this moment, not, not so that we get any kind of glory, but that he gets all the glory. You are his hands, you are his feet today. Go ahead and take your communion out. Go ahead and take your communion out. Peel the top part back and pull out that breaded wafer. This, this to me is like the most important part of today. The Bible tells us that he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We have to remember today that healing is the children's bread. That healing is available. If you're watching online today and you wanna jump in on this, go grab some Doritos and soda. Like, grab anything that you can break and eat Nice bagel with cream cheese. Gel. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But I want to I wanna pray for this. I want to sanctify this. Set apart unto God. Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to us. 
that we could live a fulfilled, healed, wholesome life. Lord, I know I made light today, but in all seriousness, if there's anybody here today, or if there's anybody watching online whose family or someone that they directly know has been impacted negatively by what's happening in the world today, if, if they have become sick, if they have died, Lord, we lift them up today. We bear them up that the peace of God that would transcend all understanding would touch their heart and their mind today. We pray that they would place their faith in Jesus, the one who's called us to his side to protect us and keep us. We remember that your body was broken for us, Jesus. We break this bread today, remembering the breaking of your body that brought us healing and protection into our bodies, and we receive it in Jesus' name. The Bible says that after they ate the bread, Jesus passed the cup and he said, this is my blood that has been shed for you for the remission of sin. And the most important part about this is that if you don't believe that you belong to Jesus, you'll never have faith for healing. You, you just won't. If you don't believe that Jesus loves you just the way you are, you'll never have the confidence to say, well, could you heal me? Because you don't believe he loves you. You are his. You have a relationship with him. You have access to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we could have a relationship with you. We thank you that you called us sanitized. You called us sanctified. You called us blameless and holy because that's the way you see us. We remember our right standing with you, that we have confidence to access you uh, without a sense of fear or guilt or shame. We can come and climb on your lap because you're our daddy God. We receive that promise in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, as we stand here with a national day of prayer, we come against any sickness and disease, plague or calamity that has tried to come against our bodies, our nation, and we call them to, to uh, dry up and cease in the name of Jesus. That healing is ours. We thank you that our households are cleansed and sanctified and set apart. You said that if one person in our home would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our entire household is covered and protected. So we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up our governmental officials, those who have been elected among us here in New York State, uh, here across the country, our presidents, and, and the leaders across the world. Lord, we pray that you give them wisdom beyond their understanding. That, Lord, in these times, that, that no one would be moved in selfish ambition, but what is best for the world, what is best for the country, Lord, we ask you to touch them, speak to them, Move upon their hearts in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up those families whose lives have been destroyed by this. And Lord, we ask that you send laborers to minister peace to them in the name of Jesus. That you would be the healer of the brokenhearted and that you would mend their emotional wounds. Lord, we stand here in faith today, lifting up uh, those who are in our congregation and those who are in our city. That great is their peace and their undisturbed composure. That you will keep them in perfect peace as their minds are stayed on you. I thank you that the peace of God would reign richly in our hearts and in our minds. That Lord, we would have patience with those around us. That the joy of the Lord would be our strength. We thank you, Lord, today. If you're here today and you need prayer, something's going on in your life, would you just raise your hand right here in the room? If you feel comfortable, could, could somebody in each of these rows just kind of reach out and touch their shoulder, touch their back all across the room? There's people everywhere. Just go ahead and just touch their, their back, their shoulder, whatever it is. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that your healing power is, is flowing in this place today. Your healing power is flowing online, that if there's any sick or, or someone dealing with something who's watching us live on the internet, that the power of God 
would be made manifest today. That we anticipate, we expect the spirit of a living God to know what we're going through and to touch us in a real and living way. We thank you, Lord, that there is no place for sickness and disease in our bodies, but healing is ours. I pray for those who are financially impacted by this, that you are our provider, that you make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, those who are feeling fear and, and, and are, are, are literally dreadful of what's going on, that, Lord, we pray that you would lift them up, that you would minister faith and hope into their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the local church, that you would make a way for, uh, for, for local churches to have church leading up to Easter, where we would see the biggest impact in the kingdom of God. Lord, as we leave here today, we thank you that we're protected. We're safe, that fear would not rule us, would not overtake us, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, real quick, real quick, another one of my personal, real quick, one of my personal convictions are, um, there are children who are on assisted meals in our community, and they get fed from the school districts every day, that with having no school, uh, they will not, be provided full meals throughout the week. I know that the Middletown School District has several uh, places that they can uh, get meals, uh, but we, we too have partnered with the Pine Bush School District as a uh, food site for families to come get meals for, for the next two weeks. Uh, from 11 o'clock to one o'clock, amen. From 11 o'clock to one o'clock, Monday through Friday, we're doing it kind of drive-through service. They can drive into the parking lot, we can hand them meals, uh, and they can drive back out. Uh, but we're just asking if, if anybody would like to help uh, facilitate that, come in and, and hand out meals, 11 to one, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can see Miss Ashley, I think, She's standing right over here. You can see Miss Ashley. I think we already got about 20 people interested, but we, we're going to have shifts because maybe if you can only do an hour or two hours or one day, we want to set it up so that we're covered to feed. Listen, the Bible says this, that it is God's responsibility to provide for what we shall eat, drink, and put on for clothing. Okay? And so that's, I believe, is part of the church's mission is to ensure that people in our community do not go hungry. Okay? Amen? Uh, so... I know that Middletown's doing it very well. Um, some of the other school districts are doing it very well. But if there's a need in your community, your neighbors, be a good neighbor. Cook a meal for your neighbor. Make sure that your neighbors are taken care of. Make sure that our communities are taken care of. Amen? Father, we thank you and we praise you for today. That we would not walk by fear, but we would walk by faith, not by sight. As we leave here today, Lord, I thank you that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. We were blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you.